Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about section 7.3, which includes more multiplication properties of exponents. We have been learning um, how to simplify expressions with exponents, and today we're going to continue that. So our goals are that we can raise a power to another power, as well as raise a product to a power, and you'll see what that means in a few minutes. You can use repeated multiplication to simplify a power raised to a power. So again, we will be simplifying. Here's a really nice example. We have x to the fifth raised to the second. That little two out there tells us that we're going to be multiplying x to the fifth times itself. So x to the fifth twice. Now, in the previous lesson, 7.2, we learned that when we multiply powers with the exact same base, we can simplify that and combine like terms by adding the exponents. So that means we have x raised to the 5 plus 5 power, and that is also known as x raised to the 5 times 2, because you see there's two 5s there, so it's the exact same thing. And both of those agree that we have a 10 in the exponent. So x to the 5th raised to the 2nd is simplified to x to the 10th. Now, that was a long approach, and there is a shortcut. Basically, the shortcut is multiply the exponents when you're raising one power to another power. And the big Q is that there's going to be a set of parentheses. So that number outside, you're going to multiply with the exponent inside. Please take a look at the take note below. Um, we want to multiply the exponents, and in the algebra section it shows you, um, you know, the same thing with variables. And then also focus your attention on the very bottom. There's several examples that are really helpful. Like take a look at 5 to the 4th raised to the 2nd. That can be reduced to 5 to the 4th times 2. And that's 5 to the 8th. Um, let's take a look at one more. The bottom one to the left, a to the 3 halves raised to the 3rd. So basically we're uh, multiplying the 3 halves and the 3, and that means we're going to get 9 halves. Similarly, the other two examples work out that way. Let's try a few um, problems so we can get used to this kind of thing. n to the fourth raised to the second. Shortcut, instead of writing n many, many times, you can just do n to the fourth times seven. And again, you know that because you see parentheses there with two exponents. And that means we have n to the 28th. These problems are quite quick when you get the hang of it. Now let's work with some fractions. We have x to the 2 thirds raised to the 1 half. So in re let's reduce that, and we're definitely going to be multiplying the exponents again. x to the 2 thirds times 1 half. And hopefully you're knowing or realizing that we can cancel out the 2's. Um, I'll pretend that we forgot about that nice shortcut. And we have x to the 2 sixths, and then that reduces to x to the 1 third. Now, for those of you who can automatically see that the 2's cancel out, you can just skip to that last step, cross out the 2's like this, and then you get 1 third for the exponent. A few other examples I want to show you since these are so quick, and feel free to write these down the side, that would be wise. p to the 5th raised to the 4th is p to the 5th times 4, which is p to the 20th. One more with e, a couple fractions. y to the 1 half raised to the 1 fourth, which means we're doing y to the 1 half times 1 fourth, and that equals y to the 1 eighth. Now we're going to use our knowledge of the order of operations to simplify exponential expressions. And exponential expressions just means we have an exponent in the expression. So make sure you fill those blanks in, and we will try example two. This definitely is a little bit more challenging, so it will require your full focus. Okay, first of all, let's just keep the y to the third in the front. Now we are going to multiply these exponents. So we're going to have y to the five halves times negative 2. 
that's all in the exponent. And we'll keep the y to the third. Now this one becomes y to the negative 10 over 2, or if you know the shortcut, you can just cross out the 2s. And that reduces to y to the third times y to the negative fifth. Now using our knowledge from, a, from last section, um, 7.2, we know that when we multiply two powers that have the same base, you're going to add the exponents. So that means we have y to the third plus negative 5, or aka 3 minus 5, and we get y squared negative 2, y to the negative second, and very last thing that we learned in the first section of this chapter 7, we need to fix that negative 2 in the exponent, so that means we are going to take the reciprocal, or you could just say 1 over y squared. That fixes that negative exponent. So I know at first glance this problem looked really weird, but the answer is actually nice and simple. Okay, let's move right along. Feel free to pause at any moment. We are now going to use repeated multiplication to simplify an expression like 4m to the 1 half all raised to the third. Now remember, this little 3 tells me that I'm going to be multiplying 4m to the 1 half three times. Now, like in the past, we like to sort like terms and combine them, so I'm going to put all the 4s in front, and then the m to the 1 half three of those in the back, so we're just moving stuff around right now, and of course we know by the commutative property of multiplication, it's totally fine to move stuff around in multiplication, still get the same answer. And now we have, we see right here we have three fours, so we can just combine that to be four to the third, and we also have three m to the one half, so a condensed version would be m to the 3 halves because there's three of them. And very last step is 4 to the third is 64 and we'll keep the m to the 3 halves. And that is our simplified form. So as you can see we definitely use repeated multiplication in this problem. Okay, now what you're about to see is the process of raising a product to a power. So an example of this, take a look at the very bottom right here, 3x all raised to the fourth. This is just like the one we just did together above. Um, basically you shared that exponent with everything inside. It's kind of like distribution. It's not exactly the same, but it's really similar. So you can see we have 3 to the fourth, x to the fourth, and then 3 to the fourth is 81. x to the fourth stays the same, so we got that. Same thing when there's a fraction in the exponent. You share that with both terms inside. And then reduce when necessary. Let's take a look at an application problem. This is finding the area of a square. You'll definitely see problems like this in the future, um, probably on the park test and just in future classes. So how do you find the area of a square? Well, the way that you do that is you multiply the side length by itself. Or another way to say this is square the side length to find the area. A nice little formula for this is A equals S squared, side times side. So obviously this is one side and then hopefully you know that a square has all equal sides so that means all the other sides will have the exact same length. Now we're going to take that 5x to the third and plug it in for the s right there. So we have a equals 5x to the third all raised to the second. Now we want to share that 2 with everything inside. So that means we now have 5 to the second and x to the third times 2. So we're sharing the 2. That means we have 25 in front and x squared. Oh, sorry, I apologize. x to the sixth because we just multiplied 3 and 2 to get 6. So our final answer is 25x to the sixth. 
The main idea of this problem is that you are sharing the exponent on the very outside with everything inside. Okay, we are ready for a challenge problem now. I know this looks really weird at first glance. We want to simplify this expression. So remember, we're sharing everything on the outside with everything on the inside. So let's just start. In the first step, I'm going to just focus on this second term so that we can kind of make it look better. So in the very beginning, I'm going to keep this the same and then I'll fix it in the next step. This 3 is going to be shared with every single thing in this set of parentheses. So now we're going to write this as 4 to the 3rd, m to the 3rd, and n to the negative 2 thirds raised to the 3rd. So like I just said, we're sharing the 3. Now. Let's fix this first term. We know that when we have a power raised to another power, we're multiplying. And same with this n value right here, we have negative 2 thirds times 3. Now what I'm going to do is take this 4 to the third and put it in front because we know coefficients go in front of the variables. And I'll bring down the m to the third because it's the only one like itself, and then the ends can go right next to each other. And hopefully you can tell that 1 half times 10 is 5. So this right here would be 5, and this is going to be negative 2, because the 3 and the 3 cancel each other out. So now we have n to the fifth, like I said, the 1 half times 10 is 5, and then we have n to the negative second. We're getting real close to the end. Um, the 4 to the third stays the same. The n to the third stays the same. And now, using our knowledge from 7.2 section, we're going to add these exponents because they have the exact same base. Lastly, take 4 to the third. That's equal to 64. m to the third does not change. And we get n to the third as well. So 64 m to the third n to the third is the simplified version, and yes, it looks much better than the original. Okay, just a little bit more and we'll be done with this section. We are now in the bottom right corner of your note sheet. We're going to talk about scientific notation briefly. You can use the property of raising a product to a power to solve problems involving scientific notation. You'll definitely see something like this in science class involving like a problem like with kin kinetic energy, um, speed of light, traveling, that kind of stuff. Here's an example that I want you to look at. To simplify this expression, 3 times 10 to the 8th all raised to the 2nd, you're going to raise the 3 and the 10 to the 8th to the second power. So like before what I was just talking about, you share the 2 with both. So that means we're going to have 3 to the 2nd times 10 to the 8th times 2. You know that 3 to the 2nd and the 10 to the 8 times 2 is 16. Um, 3 to the 2nd is 9 and then the 10 to the 16 stays the same. So this is the simplified version of the original scientific notation. So again, multiply the two powers. Remember that you are sharing that number on the outside with everything on the inside. Feel free to rewind, go back, pause, anything like that. Here is the lesson check for this section. Uh, you can try this now or wait till we do problems like this together during class. Just don't forget about it.